Welcome back to the Food 52 Test Kitchen. Today we are grilling vegetables. And we're going to be topping it off with a beautiful, delicious, all-purpose white sauce. We're going to talk about what we can do to make that grilling process easier and more delicious for ourselves, if only to explain how to make your grilling experience quicker and more delicious. So this is why blanching, then grilling, works. I don't know if you've had halal cart white sauce before, but it's one of the most delicious things in the world. And it's also a really great canvas for you to add additional ingredients and additional flavors for your purposes. The base of a, a halal cart white sauce is yogurt and mayonnaise. It's punctuated with garlic that ties it all together, raw garlic that gets splits. After you let it sit for a while, that garlic flavor starts to bellow out. You season it with a little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit of sugar to just curb it and give it a little bit more of that well-roundedness, acidity to cut through that mayonnaise. Bisecting a lemon. <laughs> Woo, that's almost, <laughs> look at this thing. <laughs> that's almost all of the lemon juice. And in this case, we're adding a secret ingredient, which is smoked oysters. If you don't know about this already, tinned seafood oftentimes uh, can be even fresher than fresh seafood because it's tinned at the right time, right when it's the freshest and it's processed properly. And the wonder here is that it's a one step in the food processor. With everything blended inside, you'll notice that the sauce is significantly runnier, which is perfect for our vegetables for dipping. And there is a modified smoked oyster white sauce, all purpose for all of our vegetables today. We're cutting some vegetables, but first the vegetables that we're talking about today are sort of the hardier vegetables, like parsnips, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. I like to wash my vegetables very, very well so that the skin is nice and clean, but I like to keep the skin on there because it just feels a little bit more textured and delicious. We'll start with the parsnips and the carrots. For the parsnips, I like to take the thin side and do something that we call a roll cut, which is a pretty traditional Asian way of cutting vegetables. You're gonna have your vegetable at an angle, and then you're gonna cut at about 45 degrees for your first cut. And then you're gonna roll it so that this side that you just cut comes up. And then right in the middle, roll again, slice right in the middle to create these perfectly irregular sized little triangle, what are they called? What's nice about this cut is you can adjust your angle and where you cut to make similarly sized pieces, even if the vegetable itself is a little bit irregular. And you also get a lot of exposed surface area, which means that you get a lot of space for caramelization and building flavor, no matter how you choose to cut it. That's a roll cut. Very common for braises, very common for stir fries. Up next, carrots. Long, delicious, beautiful carrots. We are going to cut these lengthwise Nice and pretty, nice and long on a platter. Next, we're going to cut up some broccoli. I love the stem of the broccoli, and actually a lot of chefs that have taught me have said that the stem of the broccoli is a little bit sweeter. So I like to process the stem separately from these long florets if your broccoli is shaped like this. Just square off a little bit on the side and take off a little bit of that peel, cut into sticks like that. So for the florets themselves, either just break them up like this. If they're particularly thick, I'll just cut them in half. The idea is that everything, each type of vegetable, should be similarly sized so that the cooking time is the same. Cauliflower comes next. Really popular shape these days, cauliflower steak. I am also a fan. Straight into chunks like this for a nice steak. Since we're blanching it, it's going to cook fully. Now cabbage, and then we're going to grill this as wedges, so we want to keep the center intact so that there's something to hold on to the cabbage. Flat side down, straight down the middle. Nice wedges. Squash is our last vegetable. This is a delicious acorn squash. Squash always classically quite difficult to deal with if you don't know what you're doing, but try to lodge it in. And if you have the appropriate utensils or tools, should come apart just like that. Take out those seeds. Now that all the vegetables are prepped, we're going to be blanching them with the exception of the acorn squash. The squash, we can wrap it, throw it into the microwave. I think it's going to be at least 10 minutes. Just get it nice and soft and almost thoroughly cooked before it hits the grill. What you need for blanching, pot of hot water, ice cold water. Hot water, by the way, needs to be seasoned. 
So the reason why we are blanching our vegetables today is because when we blanch, we're using the water to carry heat into the center of the vegetable. We're pre-cooking the vegetable so that even the inside part is going to get cooked. When you're grilling it, you're only cooking it from one side, so it takes a long time for that heat to get from the outside towards the inside. This shortens our cooking time. It makes our vegetables brighter, and it's going to give us a nice crunchy texture instead of something that's mushy that will be grilled for way too long. So first things first, broccoli. Move it around, make sure that everything is getting an equal amount of heat. You see how bright green it turns quickly? Now there is no time on this. There is no specific timing. Don't trust the timer. It depends on the size of the vegetable, it depends on the day, on the mood of the sky, and so on and so forth. But roughly, I'm doing about 30 seconds to about a minute, a minute and a half at tops for the hardest vegetables. I'm trying to cook this almost to roughly like an al dente level. If anything, by the way, the best way to learn what al dente is, I've, lear I've learned from an Italian chef, is to crack open a can of chickpeas and eat a chickpea straight out of the can. And that, for most things, is it perfect al dente. This comes in super hot into super cold ice water. Why do we put it in ice water and not just room temperature water? Ice water is going to drop the temperature of our broccoli and lock in that chlorophyll before it continues to degrade over time, which is to say that it'll lose its color. This is the most consistent way we can make sure that our vegetables are bright green and that the right texture. Give it at least 30 seconds, a minute to chill out in here, and then we can take them out. By the way, you can blanch your vegetables days ahead of time. They will keep their texture, they will keep their sweetness and their flavor. So that gives you plenty of time to plan if you're throwing a little bit of a barbecue party. Same process for the rest of all of the vegetables. Just make sure you watch it so you have a good sense of when to take them out. So all of our vegetables are blanched. This acorn squash is going to be steamed in the microwave. And after that, all of this can go outdoors with us and we're gonna start grilling. Welcome downstairs, welcome outdoors. We love being here. Uh, we're gonna get ready to grill our vegetables. So, hot zone, where all, all of the charcoal is, it's really, really hot. It's like hot enough to sear a steak on. That's how I like to cook when I'm barbecuing. I wanna be here, I wanna be cooking. When I step away, I don't want to be cooking. So that's what the hot zone and the cold zone is for. Just to prepare your vegetables for the grill, in case they stick, a tiny bit of oil straight onto the hottest zone. You want to hear a little bit of that sizzle on that grate. The carrot itself is already al dente. We're just building a little bit of char to remind people that we're actually cooking on real charcoal. Cabbage flips over, build a little bit of color. You see how quickly this comes together? If you got a nice searing hot grill, very, very easy. This will finish cooking in about two minutes. Classic Food 52 Lucas stuff. Um, episode within an episode, this is how you do a stir fry over live fire. With the sieve, the heat's gonna go in perfectly fine. The smoke's gonna come through perfectly fine. This is your wok. Here, the carrots and the parsnips can go directly in our makeshift wok. You can even season them directly here and put this directly over charcoal, the hottest part of your grill, and then you will have no fear of your vegetables falling through the grate, but you can also do a little bit of tossing and moving motion. Today we'll be plating a little bit of a cornucopia of these vegetables. Everything's going to go on together. So we're gonna go back up to the test kitchen, dress them up all pretty, and see what the rest of the test kitchen thinks. We're back in the test kitchen, and we're going to dress these beautiful vegetables up with a little bit of our white sauce and some of our accompaniments. The idea is to keep it light, keep it easy, dress it up with whatever you like, but make sure that you're building a really balanced flavor profile. So the base is this white sauce, this halal white sauce, a little bit of smoked oysters. I want a little bit of heat on this, so a little bit of chili oil. Store-bought is fine. Now, we're gonna give it a little, some additional aromatics. Scallions, some fried shallots, parsley, cilantro. I really like chopped dill here. A little bit of citrus zest today in the form of a lemon. This is just a little bit of acidity and fruit just to lighten up some of the aggressiveness of that chili oil and that white sauce. Okay. Here were our strainer stir-fried vegetables. We'll dress it similarly. It's a little bit smaller, so we can afford to be slightly more careful. So, these are the vegetables. They're crisp, they're colorful, they're the way they're supposed to be. There is a recipe if you need a recipe to follow. It's in food52.com and also in the description box below. Leave me a comment if you tried to make it. We'd all love to know how it turns out. Test kitchen approved. This is by no means healthy, don't get me wrong. 
a cup of mayonnaise and a cup of Greek yogurt. <laughs>